Hi guys and welcome to episode one of Wild Camping for Beginners. So in this particular video I'm going to be discussing if and where you can legally camp in the UK. I will go through the differences between private land and open access land and also I'll talk about some of the do's and don'ts of wild camping. So hi there guys, my name's Paul Messner and I make videos about camping, backpacking and the gear that I use. So I'm going to be making a series of videos sharing some information and tips so hopefully it'll give you all the information that you need to know for starting out wild camping in the UK. So I'll be covering subjects like where you can legally wild camp in the UK. There'll be a video on how to choose a tent for your backpacking trips and also videos about sleep systems, cook kits and meals etc. So if you would like to follow on this series, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and then check that little bell notification symbol and that way you'll be notified when the next video in the series comes out. So let's crack on with this one, shall we? So almost all of the land in the UK is privately owned. So that means you can't just pitch the old tent anywhere. But there is some good news. There are loads of footpaths and trails all over the UK where you can hike and explore some beautiful locations and that can open opportunities for you to find somewhere to pitch your tent. So the first thing I recommend you do is buy yourself an OS map for the area in which you want to explore. I recommend that you get the Explorer series, which has got a 1 to 25,000 scale, as it shows a huge amount of detail. For example, it'll tell you what is private land, what is open access land, the contours of the land, and where you can find a water source, etc. It will also show all the public footpaths and trails, and it's a great place to start when trying to find a wild camping spot. So this OS map will tell me everything about the environment that I want to explore. It will show me what is private land, which is white in colour, as you should be able to pick up here. It will also show me which is open access land, which is like a peachy colour with a darker peach border around the outside. As you can see here, here's the peachy land and there's the darker peach colour around the border. So this is open access land. The OS map will also show me which is open access woodland, which is like a lime greeny yellow colour, and that again has a salmon peach border around the outside. Private woodland is a darker green, and as you can see there, that's a coniferous woodland from the little symbol of the trees. Footpaths and bridleways are designated with green dashes. Every OS map comes with a key, so as you can see here, Footpaths, bridleways, byways, etc., are all shown with some type of green dash, but all of these can be walked on. So, what's the difference between private land and open access land? Well, private land, you must stick to the footpath. So, private land, as we've already discussed, shown in white, you must stick to the footpath. You're not allowed to deviate from this green track. So, you can't just have a wander over here and have a look or an explore. However, in England and Wales, with open access land, it's a totally different ball game. So open access land allows you to exercise your right to roam the land on foot. So this means that you don't have to stick to the footpath like you have to when you're on private land. So as you can see on this open access land here, which is the peachy colour, has a footpath running right through the middle, which you can stick to if you want, but you've also got the right to roam if you want to. So that means you can have a wander over here and see what Willy Winder Hill's all about. But with that being said, most of this open access land is still privately owned. So you should really be seeking permission before you decide to pitch your tent. So you could go down the route of seeking permission to camp on the land. That way you'd need to find out who actually owns it. So that could either be an individual or a trust like the National Trust or the Forestry Commission or something like that. So the majority of the time when you see people wild camping, they're usually in national parks like the Lake District or the Brecon Beacons. In those places there are vast amounts of open access land for you to explore. So some of this local access land is subject to local bylaws. So that means that some areas in England and Wales are tolerant to wild camping, yet in others it's strictly prohibited. So you can do a little bit of searching online to find out where some of these bylaws apply. And some of the larger bodies that own land, like the National Trust, they will put the bylaws on their website somewhere so you can find out exactly what you can and can't do on the land. So here's an example of the Lake District. As you can see from the peachy colour, there are huge amounts of open access land. And it's nowhere near anybody's house or anything like that. So does that mean that you can legally camp there? 
So although many people, including myself, do wild camp in the Lake District, it's not technically legal. It is, however, tolerated because the people that camp there are generally respectful of the land and it's usually part of a long hike. Um, so therefore, you do need time in between these long hikes to recoup, have something to eat and, and rebuild your energy supplies. So if a hike takes several days, you're going to need to rest in between each day. So a lot of people, backpackers, they take a tent um, and they stop and recuperate. So they pitch the tent late at night, get up early in the morning and no one ever knows they've been there. So although it's not technically legal to camp in the Lake District, their official website does actually promote it. I will put a link to this in the description below. They suggest that wild camping will make for an unforgettable stay in the National Park. However, as you can see, there are some wild camping etiquette do's and don'ts, which include camping above the highest fell wall, well away from towns and villages, leaving no litter. You only stay for one night and there's absolutely no fires. It's basically common sense and looking after the environment and making sure you follow the leave no trace policy. As expected, there is a disclaimer about seeking the landowner's permission, but I've never done that and had no problems whatsoever when wild camping in the UK. So here's a really good example of a very popular place for wild campers in the Lake District. As you can see here, Angle Tarn, surrounded by vast amount of open access land. There's parking not too far away and a great footpath which can get you up to your location. Another thing you can do is a quick Google of the location and open the maps. In the bottom left hand corner you can see a little photo. If you click on that it opens a 360 view where you can see all the scenery and potential places to pitch your tent. They don't have these for every location but it's well worth checking out. As you can see they are quite tolerant of wild camping in the Lake District um, as long as you're, you're up high and you're above the highest fell wall and you're causing no issues or problems for anybody else, you shouldn't have any issues at all. But that being said, uh, none of the other national parks in England and Wales promote wild camping at all unless you first seek permission from the landowner. The National Parks website does have some very good information of places for camping, but none of them are really relating to wild camping. But they still have some beautiful places where you can pitch your tent. So although it's not technically legal, I've never had any problems while camping in the Brecon Beacons or in the Peak District when pitching up on open access land. I do however always pitch my tent late, I leave early in the morning and I leave no trace that I've been there whatsoever. So so far we've not found anywhere where you can technically wild camp and it be legal. However there is an exception and that's Dartmoor. So most of Dartmoor is made up of common land. So if you wanted to, you could graze your sheep there. But it also has an old bylaw, which means you are allowed to wild camp under certain circumstances. So these conditions are that you're not camping out of a vehicle and you must pitch up at least 100 metres from a road or a footpath. So you're well out of the way from everybody else. And also, if you need to use the toilet, you must bury your waste. Uh, I think it's at least 100 feet away from your camp, away from a water source, and you must take away um, your toilet paper with you. You're not allowed to just bury that in the ground. One thing that you must be wary of though is that in Dartmoor the military do lots of exercises and testing in certain areas. So make sure that you do your homework and you don't pitch your tent in the middle of a shooting range. So look out for the warning signs, make sure you do your homework and find out where the military do their testing. Other than that you're pretty much free to roam all of Dartmoor, pitch your tent where you like and that also counts for multiple days. So far we've discussed England and Wales when it comes to the legalities of wild camping. Northern Ireland's pretty much the same. Um, all of that land is privately owned too, although wild camping is tolerated in some of the uplands there. Again, just check your bylaws or be sensible when it comes to finding somewhere to pitch your tent. So now let's talk about those lucky guys and girls in Scotland, shall we? Wild camping in Scotland is a totally different ball game. So Scotland's got some of the most liberal land access laws in the whole of the British Isles. So this means you've got much more freedom to explore some of the beautiful scenery and countryside that it has to offer. It has some of the highest mountains in the UK, many fabulous locks and vast areas of wilderness. So why does that make Scotland a wild camper's dream? Well, the Land Reform Act of 2003 in Scotland 
allows people to access nearly all of the land in the country and that also includes wild camping. Obviously these laws do come with some restrictions. For example, I couldn't just pitch my tent in somebody's back garden because I would be invading their privacy. So you're also not allowed to cause damage to the land in any way. An example of this is that I couldn't destroy a farmer's crop just to make sure I got a nice flat pitch for my tent. So the laws are based around common sense really. I couldn't just pitch up on the front garden of Balmoral or on the 18th of Glen Eagles. So in Scotland, as long as you're not invading anybody's privacy or causing any damage, you can basically camp where you like. And there's a huge amount of stunning wilderness up in Scotland and in the Highlands to explore. There are still one or two exceptions in Scotland. For example, in Loch Lomond, there are certain times of the year where you're not allowed to camp along a certain stretch. A few years back, because of the Liberal laws and the easy access, a lot of Loch Lomond was getting trashed by people that were chucking the beer cans, lighting fires, that kind of thing. So they put a ban on it at certain times of year. So make sure you check before you go because you can be fined if you are caught while camping in these prohibited areas during these times of the year. All right, let's head back down to England and Wales. So what if you want to go camping and you don't know what the local bylaws are and you want to know if you're going to be arrested or prosecuted if you're caught while camping. So the obvious thing to do is reduce your chances of anybody even knowing you were there. So by choosing the right location, the chances of somebody asking you to leave are going to be drastically reduced. If you're stupid enough to pitch your tent on the front lawn of Chatsworth House, then someone's going to ask you to shift your arse. However, if you decide to pitch up on Kinder Scout, well away from the footpath, the chances of someone coming across you are going to be virtually nil. Secondly, once you've pitched up your tent, enjoy the peace and quiet. Don't have a party. Don't start lighting fires and having the music full blast. And there's no need to have a 3000 lumen torch that's going to turn you into a lighthouse. People will be able to see you from miles away. But what if you've been quiet, pitched discreetly, and someone still comes across you and asks you to leave? What offence have you actually committed? Well, the actual offence that you are committing comes under the trespass laws. Trespass is normally covered under civil law, so a passing policeman is not going to suddenly whip his handcuffs out and arrest you. So generally speaking, trespass isn't a criminal offence unless some statutory provision makes it so. So this would be something like causing damage to the land or threatening or abusing the landowner. So in reality, the worst case scenario would be the landowner would ask you to leave. So in all my time of wild camping, I've never been approached by any landowner or asked to leave. But never say never. If I was ever to be approached by a landowner, I would first try negotiating. I'd be very polite and say, I'm ever so sorry. I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to camp here. Um, I'm just taking a few photographs of the sunset and the sunrise. Um, would it be okay if I left early in the morning and left no trace? I would emphasize the fact that I will leave no trace whatsoever, cause no nuisance or damage, and I would leave at first light in the morning. But if the landowner was quite adamant that I had to leave straight away, um, I would respect his wishes and politely pack up and go home. So once the landowner has asked you to leave, he could pursue you if he wanted to, in a civil court for damages, but that would be extremely unlikely. He or she would only be awarded damages if you'd actually caused damage or if you were in breach of the peace. So as long as you behave yourself, cause no damage, no argument with the landowner, you'll have no problem whatsoever. So I'll quickly summarize everything that I've discussed. While camping in England, Wales and Northern Ireland is not technically legal unless you're in Dartmoor. The access laws in Scotland are much more liberal and you can virtually pitch your tent anywhere as long as you're not invading anybody's privacy or causing damage. Many areas in the UK will tolerate wild camping as long as you pitch your tent high above the highest fell wall, you pitch late in the evening and leave early in the morning and leave no trace whatsoever. As long as you're discreet, you should have no problems at all while camping in the UK. That being said, don't take my word for it. Do a little bit of your own research and make your own risk assessment. But as you've seen from some of my videos, I've enjoyed some beautiful countryside and pitched up with some stunning views. I hope you found this video useful. In the next video in the series, I'm gonna be looking at how to choose a backpacking tent. So make sure that you subscribe, you hit that little bell icon, and that way you'll get a notification as soon as the next video is released. If you've got any questions at all, or you think there's anything that I've missed, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try and answer as many as possible. Until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.